But it is good to see all of you here this morning as we come and we come and worship the Lord today. As Jim read a while ago, it's the same scripture I'm going to use this morning out of the 15th chapter of John. In the 12th and 14th verse that I will take my text from today. Fifteenth chapter, the twelfth, thirteen, and fourteen. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this that he lay down his life for your friends, and you are my friends if you do whatsoever I commanded you to do. As we come today, we come celebrating the uh, Memorial Day of the Fallen Soldier. Here we see in the scripture this morning that, that the, Jesus was talking to his disciples. It wasn't long, if you continue to read the book of John, you'll see at the time that Jesus was crucified and he laid down his life. And then in the scripture it says this morning, greater love had no man than this that laid down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life. And the way I look at it today is that Jesus laid down his life for our sins. We were lost in sin. We were dying on the way to hell. And Jesus came and he stayed here for 33 and a half years. They crucified him. He was our sacrifice upon the cross and he died for our sins. But as also we look at it, I look at it, two people that will lay down their lives for me and for you today. That's Jesus. He will forgive you of your sins where you have failed him. It doesn't make any difference what you have done in your life. He will save you. He will keep you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But then again, the, uh, the soldier laid down his life for our freedom. A freedom that we have today. The freedom that we have the opportunity to come in and doing what we're doing today. We have a freedom that we can come in and hear singing as we heard it today. Because we have the freedom because of the soldier today. And as we come this morning, I want before I really get into my message this morning, I want to give you a little history about the Memorial Day that we're celebrating. First of all, down front you see, uh, down front in front of me, there's a rifle. There's a rifle. Somebody said, well, we all not have um, guns in church, but that's okay. Because if you are out on the battlefield, and Doug can, can tell you about this, that when you're out on the battlefield and you have one who's thicker, he's, uh, thicker than a brother, that's closer than a brother to you, he's got your back, she's got your back, whatever. We don't look at a soldier as a male and a female. They're a soldier. The female soldier, she's a soldier. Uh, and the man is a soldier. And so we uh, we. Uh, recognize that but we see this display when someone gives their life on the battlefield before they're sent back home this display is set up and the rifle will have a bayonet on it and it's turned upside down signifying that the soldier went down fighting the boots signify, as you see the boots in front of you, it hit, was his last march out on the battlefield. We also see that the dog tags are imprinted with the soldier's name. It has the, man's, uh, has the soldier's name, his religion, and also his social security number or service number on it. And hung from that cross to see that identification would never be forgotten. As they uh, see the soldiers come and pay their respect. It's a whole different uh, ball game and a whole different uh, scenario when you are on the battlefield and someone dies very close to you and then you see that. 
Life is so short in our lives today. People don't realize how short life is, but life is very short. As I tell you a lot of times, it, we're going to be gone a lot longer than we are here. People don't realize that. Young people today think they're going to live to be 100, 200, 300 years old, but life is short. Two, two young men or a young man this past week were killed in an automobile accident and as, uh, at 17 and 18 years old. Life is short. Why am I standing here with you this morning? Because of the grace of God this morning at 72 years old that I'm here because God has looked after me all these years. We see the helmet is standing, uh, is sit on top of the rifle, uh, representing what the soldier stood for and why he was there. He was there for a ba uh, for battle. He was there to uh, stand his ground, and it also represents that the battle is over for that soldier. So as we come today, we look at that. Also, another part of history this morning. That sometimes people get mixed up in the holidays or the Memorial Days or what we're celebrating. And Armed Forces Day is for those who are continue to wear that uniform. If you see a, a soldier in a store or, or, or you go to the mall or wherever you go, you see a soldier in uniform. They are still in the service serving you, serving and uh, protecting you over the freedom that we have. And then we got Veterans Day for those who hung up the uniform. You have served your time. You are retired from the service. That's the time we recognize the veterans. But also Memorial today is we come to those who have never made it out of the uniform. They were killed on the battlefield. They were protecting us at all cost. And we see that we see this morning let me do one thing before I get started. And this morning, see I can add this in. This morning we light this one candle this morning for the fallen soldier. As you look at that candle, you see one candle. But if you was in military, you would see soldier after soldier after soldier lined up ready to go to battle for you and for me, for the freedom that we have. People take it for granted. They, what, how, because of the house you live in, the car you drive, the, uh, you got a retirement check coming in, you think everything is free, but it was paid by that price of a soldier laying his life down for us today. Jesus speaking, speaking to his disciples here in the 15th chapter this morning. He said, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for our sins. Where we, when we were born, first born into this world, we were, uh, came into sin. There's nothing we've done. But we, when we came into the world, it was a sinful world. And as we came into this world, we uh, were sinners until the day we realized that we need someone greater than ourselves. We realized in the book of John in the third chapter when Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, how can I know this Holy Spirit? How can I be born again? And Jesus tells him that you got to be born again. He says, how can I go in my mother's womb the second time? And he wasn't talking about that. He was looking at physical. Nicodemus was looking at the physical death of birth where Jesus was looking at the new birth, where we got to be born again and asked him to come in your life. And I, and I pray this morning, if you're sitting here in our, in our congregation this morning, don't know the Lord is your Savior, today may be that day that you want to ask God to come into your life today. But we see, as we look at our scripture this morning, we see that... Uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus, uh, no greater love than this man, than this, that a man lay down his life. But you know, throughout the Bible, as I studied for this particular message this week, is that you look in the Bible, you'll see different um, memorial takes place. And a lot of times people say, well, I don't think they ought to have a moral service. I don't think they ought to do this. 
or do that. That's man-made. But I want you to remind you that, uh, that God destroyed the earth in a flood. He told Noah, I, I established my covenant with you. Never again will I with all the light be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And we see in the ninth chapter of the 11th verse of Genesis, he says, I will, I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all the flesh be cut off anymore by waters of flood. And then, the Lord, and then God says, I have set a rainbow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. So, so every time you see a rainbow in the sky, God is reminding us that we do not, uh, he will not destroy this earth by water or flood. We see also over in the book of Joshua, in the fourth chapter, the sixth and seventh verse, we see Joshua tells, and he, uh, he tells them in the future when your children ask what these rocks are, when they were going across the Jordan, they, they walked out over on dry land. They had prayer and they walked over on dry land. They went through the, uh, the river of Jordan. They took rocks. He told the children, the, uh, the people there, to take the rocks and put them in a formation. So when other people come by and they see this memorial set up, they knew that this is where Joshua went across on the Jordan. And he promised that they would know that. When he crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Lord would, would cut off. These stones are to be on more to the people of Israel that they were going to be free. They were coming out of bondage and Joshua leading them into the promised land. You can look in the book uh, also in the New Testament in, where Jesus is in the upper room with the disciples. But just before he was crucified, he was up in the upper room and talking with his disciples and he did communion or they did what we call the Lord's Supper. And he told them about the, the uh, bread and told them about the juice and told them about the, uh, the body of Christ and, and the blood of Christ. And he said, the one thing he says, do this in the remembrance of me. We are to remember his sacrifice. Jesus died for our our sins and we need to remember that he said Jesus he said do this in the remembrance of me but we see that we see also that the uh, more day is another holiday to honor the armed forces personally killed in battle is defending our country the idea of a more day goes back years after the Civil War when the relatives of the soldiers who have been killed would uh, decorate the graves with flowers. Three years after the war ended of the Civil War, General John Logan proclaimed this as a holiday, that they could put flowers on all the soldiers that have given their life in battle. And then uh, they call it Decoration Day, where they could put the flowers on the graves. And then in 1882, Decoration was given its uh, modern name, Memorial Day. It became Memorial Day, a memorial time to remember those who are afflicted. And Memorial Day in 1971, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday as we have it. It's good to go on a picnic. It's good to go to the beach. It's good to go out and have a uh, fellowship with friends. It's good to cook hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. But we, uh, sometime during that time, you need to stop and thank God for sending the soldier that went to a foreign country and never came back. And he laid down his life for his friends. And this is us today. A, a day when we remember the heroes who have suffered and perished so we can live and stay secure. A lot of people think that we are secure because uh, we inside the United States. I'm telling you that the reason why we are secure is the people who are all around the world today. They are all around the world uh, serving us. Uh, a lot of you would be surprised how many soldiers are, are on station outside the United States. Those soldiers who were just like us, us in every way, except that when we did everything for ourselves or for the people, we knew they fought for us and whom they even, we didn't even know. They didn't even know 
I had a friend went with me through basic training. And after he went through basic training, we went to tra uh, basic training together. We went to automotive school together. We went to Fort Seal, Oklahoma together for track school to working on tanks and personnel carriers. He went off to Vietnam, spent uh, his tour of duty over in Vietnam. As he came back home, a friend of his got in touch with me after he got back home and only been back from Vietnam for only about uh, about a year. And he got killed on a motorcycle accident. But he went and served his country. He went out and did what he needed to do. The, uh, the Memorial Day gives us the opportunity to show our respect and to pay our respects to the people. Those great soldiers we have made attempt to do the same. So today, as we come today, we come and gather together, remembering those brave souls of men and women who have uh, served in the military, who made the eternal sacrifice at the calling of their nation on the foreign beaches of France, or in foxholes, or in the sea, or in the air. These soldiers needs, need our respect. So many of them had hardly began, uh, began their life when they realized they were in the prime of their life. You know, I, I read something this past week that uh, I know we've been going through the virus thing all year and, uh, and last year and the, the kids are going to get graduated and they wanted to have their senior moment but like everybody else is having. I saw someone t uh, post on the internet the other day that he, uh, back in 1968, 69, and 70, we, uh, the, uh, the uh, high school class wanted to do that too. But also, after they did that, they, they didn't take a trip to the beach. They didn't take a trip uh, around the world. They took a trip on the battlefield of Vietnam. And today, the kids today say, well, I want to, it's good to have a, a, a graduation. But the only reason you're having that graduation is because we live in a, a life, live in a country of freedom. And that freedom is because of the soldier today. They had big dreams. These kids who went over to Vietnam at an early age, 17 and 18 years old, they had big dreams. They had hopes. But in a blink of an eye, the United States government, Uncle Sam, we call it, drafted them into the military. I remember back when... Um, when I was just getting out of high school, my, my brother, he, he was drafted into the Army. He went to Fort, C, uh, he went to, uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and done his basic, left there, went to Fort Orr, California. And he ended up in Germany for 18 months, and he, came, he was fortunate enough to come home. But he served. He'd done what, he, what the men and women, uh, what the government, uh, Uncle Sam told him to do. But you know, we, uh, that's what we need today in the world that we live in. In the world that we live in, a lot of kids today don't understand. Uh, they think everybody's got the same thing they got. They think that if I got a Tendo, if I got a, a phone, if I got a big screen TV, they think everybody in the neighborhood's got that. And that's not true today. I can show you right around the church that people go to bed at night hungry where a lot of times we're throwing the food away out of the kitchen or you can go to McDonald's out to, or any eating place and after they finish uh, cooking the meal at that night and they have it leftovers, they just throw it away and people on the other side of the world are crying out for food today. We gather today because of that courage, because of that sacrifice of love, and we must not forget it. The free air that we breathe this morning is in the product of the blood shed for us today of the soldier. Because of that, Jesus shed his precious blood that we may have life and we may have it more abundantly. He shed his blood for our sins, but the soldier, he died for our freedom. On this day, we remember not only the fallen soldier, but we also remember those who came home bearing the, the lasting scars of the war and the badges of courage. They are, form, uh, they are former soldiers who stood before us today and, and live in testimony and selfish sacrifice of freedom defense. When our nation called, they answered it. When freedom was jeopardized, they fought it. And when danger drew near, they ran into the sound of the guns. 
Courage is not confined to the fields. Battle has been abundance in every home. They have been sent sons and daughters off to war. And some of these now, since we, uh, since we don't have draft, the draft in anymore, the soldiers that you see today are volunteers. They are volunteered to, uh, to enter the service because mama, mama served in the military or daddy served in the military or the granddaddy served in the military. They wanted to go in their footsteps and they want to do their part in the military. Behind each name sketched on a granite wall, memorial are moms, dads, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters who have paid this price. And they have gave their they have they gave their flesh of their flesh and the blood of their blood. To this day they cling to a letter. It may have been the last letter that they ever seen. And people say, Well, I don't know why people cling on to those. I can tell you right now, I've got the birthday card that my mama gave me that I, I at my last birthday party at the age of 18. I'm 72. I can look at that card and that's my mama's handwriting. That's my mama who gave me birth. That's her handwriting. Said, I love you. So people today, they cling on to a final letter or a yearbook the year they graduated or a coat or a jacket that got hanging in the closet with a big letter on it that what school they went to. Precious reminders of the loved ones who never came home. To the men and women here today, we give the gift of loved ones. We offer our thanks. We thank you if you are here today and, and someone who has died and uh, went off to battle and they never come back home, we thank you for that service. We thank you for lending us that person to fight our battles. And people who have never been in the military would never understand all what I'm saying today until you actually walk on the battlefield. You actually go where the action is taking place. Over the years, American, Americans in the uh, United States have visited the Vietnam War uh, wall that's in Washington, D.C. to smooth out the pain that brings closure to different chapters of their life and to remember those they loved at the foot of the wall. I had a friend that worked with me uh, in Raleigh and her husband was in the Marine Corps and he was drafted and he was called uh, to Vietnam and, he, and when he went to Vietnam he never came back home and I've been to the wall I have took that piece of paper and I have sketched it where his name would come out Robert Breeden was his name had two had a daughter he had a daughter and a son he, he knew his daughter he never met his son because he was on furlough when he came home she got pregnant he went back to vietnam he never came back he never his son never met his dad they have left tokens and remembrance they have sought to mend the past and old soldiers leave their dog tags or a POW missing in action bracelet. They find out that person is on the wall and they take the bracelet off and lay it down on the wall. A woman leaves her wedding band the day before she remarries and says her final goodbye because her husband was killed in action. We observe a Memorial Day for the same reason they continue to go to that wall. The heroes, the heroes, we remember lead meaningful lives. We're never forever changing for having known all of them. A lot of people's on that wall. Matter of fact, it's 58,220 men and women name is on that wall. That a lot of you, a lot of people knew, a lot of people don't know, but they stood for freedom. So there is another reason we observe this day. We must never, never forget the words of the fallen. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. Someone has paid the cost for us to come this morning to worship the Lord, to come in this house, out of the rain, in the heat, 
to worship the Lord, somebody, somewhere is protecting us today. And I know God is protecting us, but God has also made the soldier to protect our freedom today. Freedom is not free. As soldiers continue to fight for our freedom around the world. You can go to Arlington Cemetery in Washington, D.C., and you can see row after row after row of graves. Not only counting the, the 58,000 uh, some soldiers on the wall. If you've ever been to Arlington Cemetery, you find out it's 639 acres of nothing but row of crosses of headstones that men and women have given down their lives over the years. 639 acres why you still are free because of that soldier that died on the battlefield if you go back in time we have had wars of the American Revolution 4,400 4, men and women laid down their lives the war of 1812 2,200 people died the Mexican War 13,000 died. The Civil War, 618,000 soldiers died. The Hispanic American War, 2,400 people died. War, World War I, 116,516 died. World War II, 405,399 laid down their lives. The Vietnam War, 58,220. And they're still away from home, away from the loved ones, still fighting for our freedom today. So we see that, there an, that we never should never forget about the freedom, the precious gift given to the rest of us at a great cost. It costs something. And today in our generation today, people don't understand, especially the younger generation, they don't understand that freedom is not free. It's costing somebody. It's costing somebody. We must always remember, we must always remember so that we may always be free. So on this particular day, on this Memorial Day weekend, I urge you to reflect on the devotion of the uh, brave, uh, brave men and women that have served our military, who have served and continue to serve our country because of that contribution. The citizens across this great land of ours is able to be enjoy freedom and abundance. May we hope a place for each one of them in our thoughts and our prayers not only on this particular special day that we call Memorial Day weekend and Monday being Memorial Day, but also through the year, this is a time to pay tribute, a time to remember, a time to reflect on the sacrifice of the American soldier. And we know that in years to come, more brave souls will be sacrificed to keep our freedom. If the United States wants to be a, a, a place of freedom, they will go on a foreign field and people say all the time I've talked with people and say why 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 we got to send people over to that country why don't they come over here I'm telling you and I'll tell the young generation today you couldn't handle it you don't want them to come here and get in a battle with us here it's better to go there and fight because when you're fighting on that soil you are protecting our soil and your mom and daddy and your sons and your daughters, grandchildren. The Bible in the book, uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, John, greater love than this, than greater love no man had than this that a man lay down for his life. May those who gave their lives for our country rest in peace and eternity. And may every uh, old soldiers on the ground find God's mercy the rest of the days remembering freedom is not free there are also 1700 soldiers after all of these years are still missing in the action in Vietnam War 
They went, didn't ever come back. Nobody don't know where they're at. And every once in a while, you'll see, you'll see that the the, uh, the people in Vietnam will come up and say, "We found these bones," and they find out there's a man. It might be a pilot, maybe an army, maybe a marine. But they'll find them and send them back home. It won't long ago, I believe it was a man that had been. He was in a pilot and. His uh, plane had been shot down, and they found him, and they sent him home so his family could have closure. As we finish up the service today, we're going to have an invitation. And as we finish up the invitation, I have asked Steve Emery if he would come down, and we're going to have a roll call today on some of the family members that you know that have laid down their lives that we may have uh, freedom in our lives. Also, as you leave here this morning on the table as you walk outside is a bookmark. You can pick one of those up and it's Memorial Day 2021 roll call and it has the names and some of you will recognize those names because some of them is your brothers or sisters or someone that has passed away. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this time. Most gracious Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy towards us. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. That we may have life, we may have eternal life through the shed and blood of your son. And God, we also today thank you for the fallen soldier that have laid down their lives in a foreign country, that we may have the freedom that we have today. Lord, I, I pray today for the ones who are sitting on the sound of my voice that don't know you as Lord and Savior. Today may be the day that you come to know him. And God, we pray that you go with us as we celebrate the Memorial Day, remembering of the falling God, we'll just give you the praise, honor, and glory in everything we do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, amen. amen.